This video is sponsored by World Anvil. Can your players ever break your game? This is a term I've seen thrown around a lot throughout my years in this hobby. My players broke my game. They've completely broken my adventure. My players ruined the campaign. But is that possible? Well, short answer, no. Long answer, yes. Let's talk about it. This video was voted on by my patrons and YouTube members. This is actually the runner up to the most popular one, which is a video about Baldur's Gate 3, which I'm currently playing for the first time. We'll talk about that pretty soon. There are some months where I have multiple open spots for bonus videos, so I might pick multiple winners from the poll based on which topics the patrons and YouTube members vote for. If you want to help vote on future polls for bonus videos, consider becoming a member. Those links are in the doobly doo below. Now, let's start by defining our terms. Last year, I made a video about the term game breaking, which is not the same thing as what we're talking about today, and this is an important distinction. Basically, something being game breaking usually refers to a mechanic, a spell, a feat, a subclass, that actively harms the fun of the campaign. If everyone is trying to enjoy a gritty survival game where rations matter and you could genuinely struggle to survive, the Goodberry spell could break that game. If everyone enjoys tense combat against equal foes, there are certain spells and feats and class features that might harm that enjoyment by making fights feel trivial. Whether or not they're balanced almost doesn't matter as much as whether or not it makes the game feel less fun. It's a nuanced topic, so go check out the video. I think it did a nice job of covering all the ways mechanics can break a game depending on your style of play. But today we're actually talking about the opposite. We're talking about when players break a game. Now the reason I wanted to talk about this is because every time I see a GM online talking about how their players are breaking their game, I start to get very suspicious. I know this is not everyone's experience and we'll talk about exceptions a little bit later, but I want to start with the sentiment that I've wanted to tackle for a long time, the one that I've seen online and that I want to challenge. I know there are lots of GMs who sit down at the table with the goal of telling a specific story, and then the players do things that the GM wasn't expecting, and the GM gets frustrated. And so they'll go online and say, well, my players are destroying my story. And look, maybe, right? Maybe they really are destroying the story you had in mind. But the players didn't come to the table to hear your story. They came to the table to tell their own. They came to the table to be the main characters of an adventure and to make decisions, and none of that means they're expecting to follow your plans. To make this point, I want to play a clip of Brennan Lee Mulligan talking about the first published adventure he tried to run and how his players absolutely broke his campaign, but he reacted exactly the way he should have. So I got Acts of the Dwarvish Lords. Ooh. This is like a 220 page adventure, it's thick like source book, not hardcover, still paperback, but like a thick adventure module for like 12th level characters. And it's this huge fucking dungeon that's like thick and hefty. And I like hand traced all the maps and did all this stuff. Tracing paper out? I got, or? broke the tracing paper oh, out. Oh my man. <laughs> the setting dictates that the first event these characters go to is in a dwarven settlement where a marriage is going underway uh -huh. and as a little bit of like flavor it's an older dwarven guild elder uh marrying this younger dwarven like princess mm -hmm. and the princess is like not super hyped about the wedding okay and it's like but you know, but then the wedding is attacked by the evil wizard Bombeldo or whatever uh. <laughs> the guy's fucking name is and uh what ends up happening is I start to narrate this wedding literally just to set the scene of the piece he's doing like a little bit of role playing before the adventure starts. Uh -huh. Well, check it out. I narrate, someone rolls some like, you know, insight check or whatever, whatever it was in second edition back mm -hmm. then, rolls some, you know, wisdom based check about the dwarven princess. I go, yeah, she's not super hyped about the wedding. Guess what my PCs do? They fucking clock the groom over the back of the head. <laughs> kidnap the princess and they're like we're not gonna watch you get married to this person you don't like wow. and so i go uh are you sure you don't want to <laughs> are you sure you don't want to stay and they go no we're kidnapping the bride and we're getting her the fuck out of here and so the adventure becomes the dwarven militia chasing down these kidnappers and of course i'm like they're immediately having the most fun yeah. in the world they've kidnapped this princess and then i just start role playing this princess as being like yeah thank you this was uh a bad situation <laughs> situation to be in so in other words weeks and weeks and weeks of my life and 95 percent of this book are gone in the wow. first it wasted a ton of tracing paper uh, god the amount of tracing paper i could have done so many pokemon <laughs> so many digimon so many pokemon dude it all became nothing bombeldo <laughs> bombeldo showed up to literally an empty he's like i have come to kidnap the princess <laughs> guess what dog she's gone <laughs> She's fully gone. Help us find her. 
<laughs> oh, that would, yeah, just reverse again. There, Bombeldo, nobody is coming after Bombeldo. Bombeldo is coming after you. I have come to snatch your princess. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, my God. The groom's unconscious. <laughs> Yeah, I guess let's get let's get on this. I have a whole dungeon full of monsters. Well, can these monsters chase dwarves in a stolen wagon? No, it's a bunch of rust monsters and Otayugs underneath this bullshit. Yeah, well, fuck you. We can't use your help. Um, <laughs> now, Brennan's point with the story was that he put a bunch of work into prepping a module and it wound up not mattering, which is why he personally doesn't use modules for his games. I've had similar experiences with some modules, but I still use them. In fact, I use them more now than I ever used to. But it's totally reasonable for him to feel like the wasted work meant modules weren't worth it for him to run them anymore. But the point he circles throughout the story is that the players were having more fun following their own personal objectives. So it doesn't seem like Brennan ranted to his friends, oh my god, they ruined my campaign. He basically instead said, oh my god, I wasted a bunch of time prepping the wrong stuff. Which means he handled this the right way. He abandoned his plans even though it meant wasted work, and he followed his players' leads instead. Now, don't get me wrong, it's obviously a huge bummer to put all of that work into something that the players will never see or experience. But that's ultimately their choice. As far as I'm concerned, it is not our job to railroad our players into following exactly the adventure we were expecting to run. It's far more important to run the game that centers on your characters. You cannot escape the degree to which the game is about the PCs. Yeah. I don't even really like to hear that dungeon masters are storytellers. They're mm -hmm. not because the story has to be predicated on the dreams and hopes and desires and actions of the player characters. Mm -hmm. When I hear GMs say, my players are breaking my game and they're not talking about mechanics like I talked about in that other video, this is the most common meaning I've seen. My players aren't doing what I want them to do. And whenever I hear someone say that, my response is, that's their prerogative. It's their game. They should be able to do what they want because it's not just your game. You are just one player. GMs are in a complicated spot because we expect a GM to do all the prep, so of course we assume they'll have a story in mind. But you shouldn't prep a story, you should prep a scenario. If you think about your prep that way, then you won't be nearly as heartbroken when the players deviate and go do their own thing, which they should absolutely be allowed to do. I've had moments in my head that I hoped would come to pass in a game, important conversations with NPCs that I'd been excited to get to, or dramatic choices I was excited to put the players in front of. But then, sometimes, the players zag on me. They sneak out of town before the captain of the guard can talk to the druid about the value of choosing your own identity. They take preparations and cast spells that make it impossible for the vampire to pose as their ally. They do a lot of careful reconnaissance and discover the trap the elemental cultists were preparing for them. For me, it's almost always a scene that I have in mind because I run very cinematic, story-first games. And it's a bummer when I have an exciting scene in my head and the players do something that means that I have to drop that plan. Sometimes I will still wind up being able to deploy it in a future session. That's actually what happened with the vampire. He was able to catch one of the heroes on their own much later in the campaign, much later in the campaign, and still was able to attempt to trick them. It didn't work, but he still got to try. Other times, the things I'd prepared would never come to pass, like in Brennan's example where the villain was basically irrelevant to the new adventure. But as much of a bummer as it is to discover that all of your preparation and cool ideas were ultimately meant for nothing, it's so much worse to try to railroad your players toward your plots, denying them agency and ensuring only your ideas matter. You and the players are working together to tell a collaborative story. If it feels like the players are breaking your campaign, it's worth reminding yourself that the players came to your table to play a game, and that means having the freedom to make choices, including choices you didn't expect. That's why it's so much more valuable to prep a scenario rather than a story. If you start with a scenario, you're more prepared to roll with the punches, adjusting to meet your players on their terms as they make choices. If you prep a story and you spend a lot of time thinking about what the players are going to do, it gets really tempting to try to stick to those plans and those ideas. And that usually comes at the cost of the player's autonomy. Now, it's okay if you need to take a minute before you're ready to account for the player's unexpected choices. You can always say, hey, if you want to go scale the Cliffs of Infinity and fight the Bride of Orcus, we can do that. I don't have that material in front of me today, so let's call the session here. I can go home and prep that content and have that adventure ready for you next time we play. You're not a famous improviser like Brennan Lee Mulligan, and you're also not recording or streaming your games like Brennan Lee Mulligan. So, it's okay to punt until next week. I honestly think that's worth doing sometimes, so your players know they have the freedom to make this adventure their own. Of course, it would still be nice if Brennan hadn't had to waste all that time on prepping his game when his players were never going to follow that path. And he was 12 years old in that story. He had a lot more free time than most of us might have. I cannot imagine how cheesed off I would be if I had spent weeks prepping material for a campaign, only to watch it all turn to smoke as the players ran off the edge of the map. 
That's why it's so important to prep smarter and not harder. There are absolutely ways to do a lot of complex prep, but to do so in a much simpler fashion, where the prep does not take weeks of your life. Especially if you use today's sponsor, World Anvil. Brennan talked about how much he enjoyed making his own worlds, and that's a really daunting challenge. When you're creating a new location, how do you even know where to start? Well, World Anvil has amazing templates that you can use to fill in specific sections to help break through your writer's block. You also don't have to have your world completed when the game begins. As you add new pages based on what the players discover, you can use the auto-linker feature to connect your page to any relevant pages from the past with just a couple of quick keystrokes. And if you don't like toggling between different screens when you're trying to run your game, World Anvil can help with that too, because you can actually literally run your game through the website. Also, right now, the folks at World Anvil are hosting Adventure April, where they're inviting you to write a one-shot adventure or a short story with the theme of adventure. And of course, you can get some more experience using their resources as inspiration and support for your writing. Check out the link in the description for more information about Adventure April. And World Anvil is offering a discount to the viewers of this channel. If you visit worldanvil.com slash supergeekmike and use the promo code supergeek at checkout, you could save 51% off of any annual membership. That's right. 51%, that is more than half off your membership. Once again, that is worldanvil.com slash supergeekmike and use the promo code supergeek at checkout. Thank you so much to World Anvil for sponsoring this video. Okay, now we've discussed the usage of this term that I have seen the most often. When the players do something unexpected and the GM feels unprepared for how to handle it, and so the GM feels like, well, the players are the problem. They're the ones breaking my game. And I hope that we've done a decent job of illustrating that your games should be unbreakable because you shouldn't have a plot that will completely fall apart based on your players playing the game the way they want to. So there we go. Short answer, no, players can't break your game. But we did mention a long answer earlier because there are some times where maybe it kind of is the player's faults. Now, I honestly never wanted to write those words or read them into a teleprompter. Ever since I put this video title in my notes years ago, I've wanted to talk about how it is not the player's fault if they do something they think is exciting. They should be allowed to do that. It's nobody's fault if the campaign goes in an unexpected direction because chasing what they want to do is clearly going to yield the most fun result. Basically everything I said in the first half of this video. But I can't leave it at that. Because exceptions exist. And there are a few categories of exceptions, and some of those exceptions are kind of extremely important to talk about. First, let's start with the one that I hope is more relevant to you. The players want to do something, and you know it's not going to be fun if they get what they want. Maybe they want to be overly cautious to the point where they're going to prep the fun out of the game. Maybe they're going to follow a red herring way, way too far and wind up wasting their time chasing a dead end. Maybe they have a plan that you know will get everyone killed if they try to go through with it. This is kind of a whole other category because the solution here is just so different. Sometimes you need to step in and save the players from themselves. And that's a topic we'll talk about another day because it really demands its own video outside the scope of this subject. But instead, let's talk about those times when, just maybe, the players do something that actively ruins the fun of the game. Notice, I didn't say they're breaking your game because the fact that it's your game that you planned doesn't enter into it at all. No, I'm talking about the times when the players just misbehave and ruin the game for everyone. This has happened in my games a couple of times. One of the clearest examples actually came at the end of the very first D&D campaign I ever played in. Our characters had charged into the ritual chamber to prevent the evil god from being summoned, and we climbed into the mouth of this giant statue of this evil god and ended the ritual. But the mouth was full of fire, and so even though we'd saved the day, we were all going to burn to death. But at the absolute last minute, the rogue busted out all these magic items he'd been hoarding throughout the campaign, and one by one, he was able to rescue all of us by teleporting us out of the mouth or, or whatever it was because he had a bunch of different tricks up his sleeve. And then we all jumped through a portal to safety and the day had been saved and we had all been saved. And almost immediately the paladin and the rogue started snapping at each other. I don't even remember what they were arguing about. And their characters drew blades on each other and our GM said, no, absolutely not. We are not ending the campaign with PVP. We're done. You saved the world. You're celebrated as heroes. Cut to black. End of the campaign. Now, if you'd asked to the mic from the first half of this video, back when he was so young and naive, well, it sounds like he'd tell you, look, that's what the players wanted to do, so let them. Follow that thread, let's see where it goes. Except, you know, that doesn't always work. There are some pathways the players might go down that will only lead to a bunch of frustrated players. I don't know if force quitting the campaign in the final 10 seconds was the best solution, but I honestly don't know what else our GM was supposed to do in that situation. But the issue wasn't that the players wanted to do something that the GM hadn't accounted for. I mean, 
sure, technically that is true, but it kind of leaves out a bunch of the nuance. The real issue was that these two players just weren't getting along. I missed a lot of the next campaign because I was often in rehearsals for the school play, which were usually at the same time our DMD games were scheduled, but about halfway through that campaign, I found out that the situation between these two players had gotten a lot worse, and one of them had left the game partway through. And all these other players were like, well, yeah, you know how he is. And I was like, no. I think I missed all that. Now, it's possible there was some bad behavior on the player's part in that first campaign, but I just missed it because I was new to the hobby, and I didn't know the warning signs yet. But either way, I don't know whether we had a problematic player or just had two players that didn't get along. But ultimately, it didn't matter. One or both of those players almost completely ruined the end of our first D&D game as a group because they shouldn't have been at the same table together. Likewise, there's another potential version of the players breaking your game. Maybe there's a player or a group of players who are actually trying to tank the campaign. Now, this is one of those topics that comes up in those D&D horror stories on Reddit, but I'd imagine it's actually extremely rare. And these situations are always more complicated than we might like to imagine, but if this has ever happened to you, and I mean really and truly, one or more players are openly trying to torpedo your game, I'm not going to blame anyone in this situation. I'm not going to ask you to think about what happened in the campaign that you did that might have provoked the player's wrath. I'm not going to blame the players and say that they have the wrong expectations for the game or anything like that. There are always way too many variables for me to give some sort of sweeping statement about how this sort of situation could have been prevented if only you'd done this one trick. Instead, I'll just say the same thing I did about the previous example. It might be that some player is just at the wrong table. Or it might be that this campaign has been spoiled by some moment that the game couldn't recover from, and it's just time to switch to a new campaign and start fresh. I've had that happen before as well. The players in that case weren't trying to break the game, but they made some choices early on that had some huge ripple effects that wound up sinking the campaign further down the road. Sometime I'll have to tell you about all the issues that arose in my first Tyranny of Dragons campaign, including when a player replaced their player character by having their new player character kill off their previous player character. That wound up being a whole thing. But overall, that's my longer, more nuanced answer. It shouldn't be possible for your adventure to be ruined by players doing unexpected things because that's the fun of these sorts of games. If your game will be thwarted by the players making unexpected choices, the issue isn't the players, it might be that you've just prepped too rigidly and you need to be prepared to roll with the punches. That being said, sometimes you do need to step in to make sure your players don't walk themselves off a bridge and fall into the river of having a bad time. And there are some times where the players are actively being disruptive and the game is suffering as a result. And it's time to make some hard choices about who is at the table. But I'd love to hear from you. How do you feel about this subject? Have your players ever broken your game? Is there some aspect of this topic that I didn't touch on or that you'd like me to see me cover in more detail in the future? Let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell. Join my Patreon or become a YouTube member if you'd like to get some cool perks. Join my Discord server to hang out with an awesome community, and sign up for my newsletter to catch my latest updates. All those links are in the doobly-doo below. If you want to hear me talk more about uh, prepping your RPG games, check out this video where I do just that. I guide you through my own campaign prep, and I hopefully give you some useful advice. Until next time, play fair, and have fun.